What's going on, everybody? Sorry I haven't made a video in a while. The reason why I have waited off to do the postseason recap has been because since last semester, I have transferred uh, different to a different college. I was originally at East Stroudsburg University in Pennsylvania, and now I'm at a community college by my house. And the only reason why I'm doing this is because, and it's not necessarily because of grades, it's because of the way that East Stroudsburg handled their academics. Um, it wasn't right for me. There was no support. Um, so I decided to come home for a semester or two, and then I will be transferring to a... Um, Patriot League College by my house. If anybody lives around here, you probably know one of the two Patriot Leagues around my house. So, anyway, let's get on with it. I wanted to talk about a few things today. I wanted to talk about the rookies and how they played this year going through the full seven rounds. I wanted to talk about how our team did overall offense and defense. I wanted to talk about what we need to do to get to the big game next year. And then I also wanted to talk about two other things. I am a huge Ohio State fan, and we're I was going to talk a little bit about that, and I'm sure everybody's wondering what my Super Bowl pick is. So let's get into it. I'll start off with the, the shorter topics, and in which let's start off with my Super Bowl pick. My Super Bowl pick is the Atlanta Falcons. They have played outside of their mind this season. Matty Ice will probably win the MVP unless Roger Goodell sucks some dick or uh, Tom Brady sucks dick to try and get Roger Goodell to give it to him. It's not going to happen. Matty Ice is going to win the MVP because he will win the Super Bowl. The final score of this Super Bowl will be 34-28 Atlanta Falcons. My Super Bowl pick. My Ohio State Buckeyes. They have the number one recruiting class coming into this year. Coming into the their the the freshmen coming into this year for Ohio State are the number one recruiting class in the entire nation. We have incredible talent from all over the United States. We have a lot of talent from Texas. We have a lot of talent from Ohio. We have a lot of talent from Georgia and Florida. So, I wanted to talk about a couple players. Sean Wade, who is a cornerback from Florida, I want to say. Uh, 5'10", 5'11", about 190 pounds. But he is an absolute ball hawk. I mean, he he's an incredible player. And then we have Jeffrey Okunda. From floor or not from Florida, from Texas, number one overall cornerback in this year's upcoming recruiting class. He's an Ohio State Buckeye. Tate Martell, an Ohio State Buckeye, Gatorade Player of the Year, has not lost a single game in his four years at excuse me, his four years at the high school that he played with or played on. So, I mean, we have talent for next year and considering that we made it to the semifinals this past season is incredible absolutely incredible so I think this is going to be the last thing that we need to push us to the next level now let's talk a little bit about the team and then I'll go to rookies and then I'll go to what we need to do in the offseason to get to the big game so this season We've had some ups and downs. We went on a five-game losing streak and then a nine-game winning streak and then abruptly ended by the, the New England Patriots. I have nothing to say about that game other than they beat us in every aspect of that game. But there's a reason why I wanted to also bring that game up again because of what we're going to be doing in the draft. I believe what we're going to be doing in the draft. So let's let's start off with the offense. The offense has played well. 
we had Bell for 12 out of the 16 games in the year. If he played those 16 full games, he would have surpassed Ezekiel Elliott's rushing totals. And he is the best running back in the league, hands down. And I'm not saying that because I'm a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. It's not a bias. I'm talking pure athlete. He is the best running back in the league, hands down. The whole talk with Ben Roethlisberger retiring and A.B. being traded. Here's how I see it. If A.B. gets traded, Ben's going to retire. Plain and simple. But there was a interview from Art Rooney II in which he said that they are planning to keep Brown and Bell on the team for as long as they possibly can. And... Ben will be back next season. I mean, he he hinted at it, but he never really came out and said that he was going to be back, but he will be back for next season, which I think is crucial to have all three of those guys back and healthy. Although it pisses me off that Bell never told the team that he had a groin, or not a, yeah, a groin injury, and he has to get groin surgery before next season. He hid it from the team. That pissed me off. But, I also wanted to talk about our defense. Our defense had played well for most of the season. It really came on strong towards the end of the season. Sean Davis was playing out of his mind. Javon Hargrave was playing well this year. He had two sacks and a fumble recovery in a, uh, for a touchdown against the Cleveland Browns. Um, he's going to be a crucial aspect to this defense moving on. Um... Artie Burns has played well for us this season, although he kind of hit that rookie wall towards the end of the season. He came away with three interceptions and about 60 tackles, which is on Richard Sherman's level. Richard Sherman only had one more interception than him, but Artie Burns had more tackles than him. So, not saying he is Richard Sherman or directly at that level, but statistically he is at Richard Sherman's level. So, Ross Cockrell, I have not liked him. I didn't like him when he first came into Pittsburgh, and I still don't like him now. I told people at the end of last season that we needed to get rid of him. We didn't. And every single time that there was a big play down the field, it wasn't Artie Burns who was getting burnt. The reason why you didn't hear his name a lot in the last six, seven games is because he was locking down receivers. So they wouldn't throw to his side. They would always throw to Ross Cockrell's side, and he would get burnt left and right. He is not, nor will ever he ever be, a lockdown corner. The only way I could see the Steelers signing him would be for pure depth. Honestly, what I think could happen, and they talked about it on Steelers.com, and I've said this for for many, many weeks, we need either to trade him or we're, not, or we're going to non-tender him. He was a fourth-round draft pick, so we could tender him non-tender him as an ex or exclusive rights free agent for a fourth round draft pick. I don't even think he's worth anything more than a fourth. I think he's a fifth or sixth round draft pick in my opinion. So he's garbage and we need to replace him. The one guy I really wanted to talk about was Sean Davis. Sean Davis was playing out of his mind and he... <sighs> I don't know how to describe this. He reminds me a lot of a Cam Chancellor. Except Cam Chancellor's been in the league for years. Sean Davis is showing that he has that potential year one. And I think if we can get somebody opposite of him that's better than Mike Mitchell, I think we'll be okay. Because I do not like Mike Mitchell. I've said that in previous videos. I think he is a liability to this team because of all he tries to do is go in for the kill shot. He almost cost us that game on Christmas Day. But other than that, I will be coming out with another mock after this video. But what I wanted to say was I gave our rookie class a B grade. And the fourth pick was Gerald Hawkins. He didn't play all season because he was hurt. Who knows what we have in him. We didn't have a fifth-round draft pick. Sixth-round draft pick, we had Travis Feeney, and he got traded. 
uh, picked up over uh, waiver wire to the New Orleans Saints, so we don't have to worry about him. Then we picked up DeMarcus Ayers, who played well for us when he had to come into the game. Played very well for us, and he is the future, I think, a wide receiver um, if he could develop this offseason. Then we drafted Tyler Matakevich, who was a special teams beast this year, and I think there's a reason why I'm holding back on him right now, but overall I gave this class a B. So what we need to address in the offseason, I think – our first round draft pick depends on a couple of players. Is LT going to be signed? Are we going to get rid of Jarvis Jones? Are we going to sign James Harrison to a year or two deal? Are we going to non-tender Ross Cockrell? I think those three are key aspects of what we're going to do. If LT's not re-signed, don't be surprised if we go inside linebacker round one. If James Harrison and or if James Harrison doesn't come back, which I hope he does and I think he will, but if if LT comes back and they sign Cockrell, we'll go outside linebacker around one to develop behind James Harrison. If LT or Cockrell don't get signed, so say for example if Cockrell doesn't get signed. We might go cornerback round one. But what I would do is I would go after a guy like uh, Dominic Rogers Camardi. Or, and I know people have said Shereen Johnson signed a big deal, but he's a restricted free agent. We could offer him a deal. So, Tremaine Johnson could be another option. Um, the cornerback from Buffalo... Um, who was in the Pro Bowl, who had an interception in the Pro Bowl. He's another option. I think I think if we, do, if we don't sign Cockrell and we bring in a veteran corner, we will go outside linebacker or inside linebacker round one. And players that I'm looking at for outside linebacker would be Charles Harris, Carl Lawson, um... couple other players, but that's really not important right now. Cornerback, I would go Gary and Conley. I, I've really been impressed with him, and I've seen him all season. He's played well. He's 6'2", about 200, about 200 pounds. And he would come in and fit in perfectly opposite of Artie Burns. And then we have Senquez Golson coming back. And who knows if we're going to keep Gay. Hopefully we will. Just to have as a veteran piece, but if we go Gary and Conley round one, I mean, that's a young defense that we could have. Uh, we could also go, if we go inside linebacker, we go Gerard Davis or Raekwon McMillan. Personally, I'm leaning more towards Gerard Davis, not Raekwon McMillan, despite my Ohio State bias, because of the fact that we already have somebody like a Raekwon McMillan in the middle of the field. We need somebody who has that, that size and that power, and Gerard Davis would be a perfect fit in the black and gold. So that's... Basically what I'm doing, but I will also do a mock draft right after this. So may the steel be with you.